as I said, this is the art exhibit and meet the artist event for Jorge Shines, August 5th, 6.30 to 7.30. And I'm Sandy Hopkins, an adult services librarian at the Central Library. And tonight, Robert Kennedy will be hosting this. He's our volunteer art coordinator at the Central Library. So I'm going to stop sharing now. And Robert, I'm going to turn this over to you. Thanks very much, Sandy. Welcome to everyone. Uh, we appreciate you attending and participating this evening. And um, our artist, uh, Jorge Antonio Sines, is an award-winning artist who specializes in abstract art and mixed media. Jorge's first memory was at the age of four. Growing up in San Francisco, his parents introduced him to a rich variety of the arts, theater, music, as well as art classes and exhibitions. In college, he studied architecture and took fine art classes. Jorge then applied his creativity to a career in retail and merchandise design, particularly in designing windows and displays. During that time, he worked with numerous artists and continued his painting. He mainly created large-scale artworks inspired by painters such as Helen Frankenthaler, Willem de Koning, Mark Rothko, and Jackson Pollock. For several years, Jorge has maintained a studio in Virginia Beach where he creates his artwork and tutors art students. His mixed media consists of layering crayon, pencil, f oil and pastel, often overlaid with a semic writing, geometric shape, or markings. He has recently begun using coal wax. Jorge's award-winning artwork has been exhibited at the Charles H. Taylor Visual Arts Center in Hampton the Virginia Beach Arts Center, and other venues. Uh, Jorge teaches in his private studio in Virginia Beach. This evening, his virtual exhibition is called A Journey Through Art, Color, Texture, and Shape. His bold, beautiful, and thoughtful artwork is a visual treat. Welcome, Jorge. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Robert, and thank you, Sandy, and thank you to the Virginia Beach Public Libraries for this opportunity to present a journey through art. We're, and I'm still waiting for my file to load, so. That's okay. We're very happy to have you with us. So why don't you, while it's loading, uh, begin by giving us an overview of what you'll be showing us this evening. Of course. So. The works that I selected for this exhibition focus, ah, there we go, um, focus on uh, my uh, journey over the last three years, basically, and uh, trying to get this to be a slide presentation. Ah, here we go. So, uh, and my work currently lends itself to social causes and uh, and uh, oh, <laughs> I lost my space. Uh, it lends its social causes, and its intention is to stimulate, motivate, and inspire you. Throughout the entire presentation, you will see how I employ different techniques, such as aesthetic writing, geometric shapes and varied views of media and substrates. This is what Robert read, and here I am working on a very large piece. Um, one of my favorite quotes by Picasso, to create, you must destroy. This is something that I apply to all my work. I am not afraid to go over something that I am really in love with, and uh, color it out or uh, block it out to create uh, something new on top of it, just because that is the part of how I, uh, how I approach my canvases. 
in a way, I give myself permission to sacrifice that one, one moment in artwork, in the artwork for the overall success of the piece. These following pieces are really um, in acrylic and oil. And uh, like I said earlier, it's an exploration of a journey that I have been on in the past three years. Uh, when I was thinking about how I would present the show, um, I pick one word, actually, I just want to let you know, I pick one word every year. And that word is what drives my work. Last year it was diversity, this year it's journey, any type of journey, whether it be mine or the journey that we collectively are taking together. In this particular piece, playing around, this is in uh, whimsical light and evocative children at play. The shapes seem to float throughout the space, giving the work a layered effect. Above has the same feeling, but was inspired by landscapes seen from high altitudes. I always sit on the uh, window seat when I'm traveling, and I always have my sketchbook with it. And I'm always enthralled with the designs that I see in topography, and they seem to come out in a lot of my work that I um, tend to do. Uh, also, just I'm in love with the square, and it shows up in my uh, in my work um, here at morning at the pond. My objective here is to create a light and misty effect seen dancing across water when shapes and color are slightly veiled. Using an array of mediums to create texture as well as palette knives gives the work depth as color deposits on the texture. With the following, this actually is a piece inspired by William de Kooning. Uh, I think Robert mentioned that earlier. He is probably one of my favorite artists. If I could go back in time, he would be one of the artists that I would want to meet. Uh, his gestural movements, his use of color are uh, things that inspire me and that drive me. And I'm constantly trying to find new ways of how I can explore those shapes and uh, the colors that I'm applying. This particular piece was inspired by Gotham News. And I called it ecstasy because it's that feeling of when one begins a piece of art and all the steps that you go through, the love and the hate. There's, there's times where you're not liking it. There's times that you're loving it. And it's every single step that you're going through um, is what this piece of art really means for me. Speak your truth. This was actually, it's one of two. This piece was inspired by Oprah Winfrey's speech at the Golden Globe Awards. And um, it, it, it's to highlight the empowerment of women. And it's also a vehicle for me to explore a different way of showing figurative uh, forms in a more abstract way. And uh, this actually, this piece actually won um, Best in Show at the Red Exhibition at the Artist Gallery that now is uh, housed within um, VBAC, which is the Virginia Beach Arts Center. Item number two, this uh, again, is a piece inspired by flowers um, in the Garden of Eden. This is an oil painting, and it's an exploration of movement and fusion. It explores the idea of vegetation rather than their physical form, as is evident in uh, the following slide, which is an up-close detail of that particular painting. It's a series of three. Here's number three, uh, which is either, num yes, either number three. This is one inspired also by flowers and the shapes of leaves, and particularly a bird of paradise. I call it my, uh, oh, her name escapes me, but uh, I'll get back to that. Here's a detail um, of that piece and the shading and the colors. Equally different, 
It is intended to be thought provoking with this, the distortions of the square, again, back to my love for the square. The piece was conceived with the idea of equality and respect, evocative of our unity and the goodness that exists in all our humanity. Right now, my work is lending itself to social causes, and I find myself immersing me myself in that, in, the, in, that, in that spectrum, and trying to uh, use my voice to shine a light on inequality, on um, racism, on women's empowerment. The following slides are mixed media and artwork. So I, this is a progression of, of where uh, I have slowly ventured into. Um, most of my work right now represents uh, mixed media pieces. This is a companion piece to uh, Speak Your Truth, A New Day is on the Horizon. Um, this canvas, I, I chose to show it because it was recently uh, reworked. Um, and it's one of those things that you, you create something and then you walk into your studio several years later and you look at it and you realize that you're in a different, in a different point as an artist and that uh, it, 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 it needs uh, what I call a refresh. And I am a fan of Rainier Maria Rilke, a romantic poet from the uh, 1900s. Um, uh, the future enters into us in order to transform itself in us long before it happens. So she's standing at a window and is looking out, and she knows that a new day is on the horizon. And I listed actually that, that, that phrase from Oprah's uh, speech, and it, what, it's kind of how I created this piece. My bleeding heart. It's a swirl of color and cells that multiply themselves throughout the canvas. Visible again is the square shape in many distorted forms. The use of mixed media enables me to bring contrast and definition to the colors. The re work represents love and its many facets. an up-close detail of the work. Again, uh, you can kind of see where I distort the square. It's still present and evident in a lot of my work. And uh, the appearance of what I early alluded to, which is a semic writing, that um, if some of you don't know what it means, it's just, it really means writing that means nothing. It actually uh, was first explored in, um, I think the sixth century uh, by the Chinese, and then la later on um, sort of brought into abstract artwork. And I use different types of uh, mediums to create it. This is called Perfect Beauty. This is actually a love story set in Persia, where according to the tale, a prince falls in love with a maiden. She's not of noble birth, so he cannot marry her. In despair, he rides his horse off a cliff, and where drops of his blood spill, red tulips sprout. Tulips are native to Persia, and travelers, travelers this exotic place in the world, brought them back into Europe. I continue to explore with different medias and other objects, such as book pages for this canvas. Embedded into the work are love quotes from a favorite book of poems that I call that, is, that I enjoy and that is called Love by B.C. Aronson. Looking with a new lens. With this canvas, I continue to emerge myself further into discovery and manipulation of different medias, as well as the inclusion of fabric with threads and book pages. And here you can uh, sort of see, this is actually turned upside down, but I left it this way because I wanted you to see that that's where the title came from. Um, it was, as I was going through the book pages, 
I found it and I just thought that it was just the right, the right name to call the painting. Um, and it's uh, an experimental piece that helped me actually move forward into where I am today. Threaded connection. This piece was actually uh, created for the Fusion Show, which is a regional show that was held at uh, the Virginia Beach Art Center last year. This year they're anniversary the show again with a, uh, the uh, show in September that's called Sea of Change. And um, since the beginning of time, humanity has been held by a thread that runs through all of us. This piece reinforces that we all belong to one race, the human race. We may be different in color, shapes, and size, but we remain equal and the same. So woven throughout the artwork are the words love, respect, humanity, diversity, and this slide um, you can see some of the fabric pieces and also some of the earlier markings and uh, some of the layers of paint that were added throughout the process. Um, here's a, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, there's a little uh, a caption there that says, take care of, it says, take care of me. And uh, I also use some bottle caps in here. I started experimenting with bottle caps also. I've been collecting, I have tons and tons of them. So I use them every once in a while in different ways in my canvases. Um, drips are also another, uh, another uh, predominant uh, aspect of my work. As a, are threads um, that I just sort of weave throughout um, my work. Red, this mixed media on paper celebrates the lives of two African-American designers. The first one is Zelda Wynne Valdez, who designed the iconic Playboy Bunny costume, and Anne Lowe, who designed Jacqueline Kennedy's wedding gown. So when I was uh, researching, these two uh, people just stood out, and I was amazed that this had happened in the early 50s and that um, it's so obscure that you, hardly anybody knew. So I thought that it was appropriate, especially in these moments, to shed uh, a light on these two uh, forgotten designers. Rebirth. Cells move about this canvas, exploding in many sizes and shapes. Markings embedded throughout the process of the work as a support frame for the activity and movement created in the piece. Rebirth focus on our, focuses on our ability to regenerate and overcome obstacles both physically and socially. Terrain. Earthly dancers crisscross fields of gold and amber in a romantic, in romantic movement, interlocked with one another. Their steps generate geometric shapes of energy and space as they float across in timeless unison. My inspiration is geometric patterns created on terrain as seen from high altitudes. And it was also painted to music from the ballet by Giselle by Adolf Adam. This particular piece was awarded uh, most creative at the Notes of Color exhibition at the Virginia Beach Art Center uh, this past February. A little tidbit about myself, I was a ballet dancer, so I use music to uh, inspire me. And I'll listen to, to anything. I don't necessarily have, I don't, scrutinize or not listen to something, even if I don't like it, I, I'll listen to it to see if, if there's something in it that, I, that may appeal to me and can move me in, in the work. But for this particular piece, um, I went to ballet for, for the inspiration. And here's some, another detail, um, a lot of intricate layering. Uh, I use charcoal, graphite pencil, um, sometimes I'll, if the paint is still wet, I'll use even 
sticks to kind of move the paint around and create some of these uh, cell shapes. I call them cell shapes. Um, sometimes they look like a square to me, just uh, in a different, different way. Hidden beauty. This is a whimsical canvas where I once again meld a female figure with my abstract shapes. Um, this piece also won most creative at La Femme Exhibition this past March. Um, and actually, a little little history on this piece. This is an old piece that I reworked. Um, so it was something that uh, was uh, came about from my journey as an artist to where I am today. And I was able to kind of meld my styles together. H2O. This is my personal uh, inspiration my, of how I see water. I happen to live on the water. So when I need some inspiration, I just go out to the dock and um, uh, just look out and watch the color, how the sun just bounces off and creates different shades and, and different shapes. And uh, this is what's my interpretation. So for this particular piece, I also used a poem by E.E. E. Cummings, uh, for whatever we lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourselves we find in the sea. I have a tendency to use poems also, and I'll present my work with the poem itself. So for Beekeeper, uh, this actually, I, I wanted to create something that embodied flora. And so I chose a beekeeper because without bees, a lot of what we eat today would not exist, and they're endangered at the moment. And I thought that it was a great way of uh, shining a light and bringing some awareness to the importance of the protection of these insects. Here is a close-up of the patterns. And, uh, on her dress or in, on, in her hat and also as she remo uh, she's pulling the veil, um, which is really meant to be the, the, uh, the netting. It really, the, it's supposed to uh, be reminiscent of the honeycombs in a bee's hive. Uh, so I wanted to somehow reference that to that. So peonies, one of my favorite pieces. Uh, not only because it happens to be one of my favorite flowers, but because they have so much meaning. With this canvas, I continue to explore movement, shape, and the application of diverse media. Movement is very important in my work. So I'm constantly challenging myself to ensure that I am creating that, 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 that the work seems to be floating from all four sides of the canvas. I, I try not to limit myself to that, but to imagine all these shapes sort of just converging onto this one one piece of fabric and that I'm just lucky enough to catch it, right? Just to catch that, that one moment as these shapes are sort of shifting through, through the air. Here's an up close detail. A good turn. This is number three. I have a tendency to create series. Um, and uh, it's just because I like to explore. I like to, if I create one, I want to create additional pieces because there's just all these ideas that are happening at the same time. And I'm, I'm just trying to grasp it and to get it all uh, onto one sheet of paper, which is, you know, not always possible. Um, again, I'm referencing back to my ascetic writing that I love to do a lot. Um, th my squares are, are evident, and then so are my cells that I tend to use. I pay close attention to a lot of the contrast within the colors and how the light 
would uh, affect them. Even though they're abstract shapes, I try to give the viewer an idea that if they were to see this sort of floating, what all the colors and how the shapes would be turning, um, if they were even able to touch it. And uh, actually, the title came from a, uh, uh, a movie, Sense and Sensibility. And uh, there's, a, there's a moment in there where um, uh, the, one of the characters is asked to take a turn around the room. So that's how I came up with that title. And I thought that was kind of funny. Um, just a little history on how I come up with some of my titles. Evening in the Desert. Um, this is actors, it's actually one of three. Uh, there's Morning in the Desert, Afternoon in the Desert. So it's just an exploration of the colors and more of an immersement of myself into my aesthetic writing and into using the different types of media that I love to use. Some of these uh, markings are also created uh, with acrylic pens. I use uh, soft pastels to sort of uh, create the, the softness, the variances in, in the colors. Um, I'll use, use a lot of uh, crayons as well to create almost like a, a veil of color that sits on top of the shapes and kind of gives you an interest and wants you to, uh, makes you want to know what's living behind um, the color itself. Here's another detail of that, that painting. You can just kind of see how some of the, the markings are, are sort of veiled behind a lot of the color. I'm constantly exploring new, new, uh, new mediums, and even if they don't work, um, I think that as an artist, for me, my, or at least for myself, it's very important to um, continue to grow. A quiver of thought. I create depth in my work by paying close attention to the values within my colors. The idea of perspective in my abstract is an approach I continually challenge myself to achieve when I am working with the mediums I employ. This work on acrylic paper is a perfect example of how I approach depth in my art. We the People was, uh, is a piece uh, that I just recently created. Um, I'll quickly read just a snippet of uh, my description. Our country and flag weeps for us as we are fighting for equality and freedom from oppressive and systemic racism. Only together we can overcome our differences and accept our diversities. And in a way, it was a way to shine light on uh, the protests and um, also sort of unify them under our flag. Um, and I used that as the inspiration for this work. Here is a detail. If you're wondering how I create, if you look on the upper right-hand corner, these sort of this copper uh, uh, painting that you see there. That's actually created with Starbucks uh, coffee uh, holders. Uh, I just open them up and they're sort of corrugated on the other side and create different patterns. So I also explore different different materials to see what kind of shapes I can achieve. Another uh, detailed slide. Um, Epiphany. This is actually just a, a fun little little piece that I recently created, and I really love just how the the pastels. A lot of the light that you see in here was created by using soft pastels on top of acrylic, and I believe I may have used some oil sticks. After like the fourth medium, I kind of lose uh, track of what I'm using because I'm grabbing too whatever's on my art table. This one's called Afternoon Tea. And uh, if you're wondering how I come up with my, with my uh, titles, that sometimes it happens while I'm working and I'll, I'll write the idea down and I have hundreds of post notes in my studio with different ideas. This one so happened that when I finished it, it just, I think it's the coloration. I could see this as being a, 
a small floor arrangement on uh, sitting on a on a table um, where ladies were having tea. Um, this piece called Breaking Bonds. This is actually a sculptural piece that I recently created, and it also has to do with systemic racism and the and the breaking of those bonds. Um, here's some um, a side view of it. Um, a lot of this was you uh, was created by using different types of glues um, and also paper and threads and um, just uh, hardware you can find at Home Depot. And the next uh, slides are actually the cold wax and uh, mixed media artwork. Artwork. I believe that Robert alluded to the fact that I am uh, recently discovering this medium, so I'm happy to share a few pieces with you. This one's called Between Heaven and Earth, and I'm going to just read the little poem. I'm not, I'm not a poet, but I just so happened that everything worked together for this. Um, Aloft on light from dawn to dusk, only then can you see the light between heaven and earth. It's part of a collection, and actually the poem carries each one of the titles for each one of the pieces. So here's a close-up. That is actually powdered pigment that um, I use with uh, cold wax that um, will bloom once you uh, 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 put them on, and then you kind of brayer them into the, into the work. Or you can actually just mix them into the cold wax and create a pigment with them. Uh, a lot of this, uh, these sort of uh, these shapes are created with dental tools. Um, uh, my dentist was nice enough to hook me up with some unused tools, and I can gouge into the the wax and create different shapes. And then I uh, apply veils of color to sort of transition from one color into another. This is the second piece, which is called The Lost on Light. Um, it's a smaller piece. A little detail. So a lot of this, I, I, it reminds me of Venetian walls, right? Venetian palaces that are decaying. So a lot of this is achieved by applying solvent washes, just using mineral spirits. And there's different processes that you can use to create whatever the desired look is. Another detail shot. Um, this is the third piece to that series. Detail shot of that. This one's called Revelry, and it's a cold wax and mixed media on oil paper. And you can, it's evident you can see a lot of the washes through, through the process and how um, I've lifted the color off and I apply a little bit more. So it's definitely uh, a wonderful medium to work with. I really love it. Um, uh, I love the idea of being able to use uh, crayons and colored pencils and, uh, again, being able to create uh, uh, myasemic writing within the work. This one's called Realia, the Ascension of Creation. This one's actually uh, currently on exhibition at uh, VBAC. Um, it's a, a piece that's been donated to uh, a children's organization here in Virginia Beach, and um, they're bidding on it. Um, so if you'd like to see it, you can go to the Virginia Beach Art Center and uh, see it in person. And there's a poem that was, this was actually a piece that was co-created with Tim Wright, and I'm just going to quickly read just a snippet of his poem because it's very long. What hope is there for love until my heart can break with yours and yours can break with mine? Can justice ever be more than a word? And it's really the love story between the artist and the muse in this uh, particular sense. The muse is really just a thought, a feeling. And there's Tim's uh, uh, right here, uh, Tim Wright. Dot net, so you can actually see uh, the entire poem and um, in its entirety. At, uh, I think he has it on YouTube. And the organization is Stand Up for Kids, which helps homeless children in the Virginia Beach area. Here's a close up of the piece. 
intersections. Just a fun little piece I created, a thought of being at a, uh, uh, at a stop sign or at a crossroads, in which direction am I going to go? Um, that's how that came about. Again, my coffee uh, sleeves. That's how I create some of this. Ethereal Beauty 1. As I said earlier, I, I, I tend to create in series. And you can kind of see some of that I used the bottle caps in here a little bit to create the shapes. This is actually one of my, not first pieces, but probably one of my second to third pieces you know, experimenting with cold wax. Here's a detailed look. Ethereal Beauty number two. Reminds me of being sort of like in outer space. Another detailed view. Nightlight. Uh, fun little piece. Just reminds me of being out in the city, being out with friends. Something that we can't do right now, but in a way um, I wanted to uh, sort of have this piece be evocative of that feeling. Here's some more close-ups, and you can kind of see some of the powdered pigments that are embedded into the work. And this one, um, I snuck this one in. This one's called Paradigm Shift. This one actually um, will be submitted for the regional show at the Virginia Beach Art Center, which is called Sea of Change. It's one of three, and I'll just quickly read uh, what I wrote about it. It's breaking away from old Foxton ideas that keep us from experiencing the goodness within all of humanity. There is a sea of change taking hold of us, allowing us to see the world in a new light, allowing us to be free from oppression of any kind. And here is a detailed look at this piece. Lots of solvent washes went into creating a lot of uh, the, uh, the different shifts of color that you see within the work. And again, my typical ascemic writing that kind of shows up. I try to break it up also so it doesn't look uh, too perfect. Here I am. So if you want to reach me, you can reach me at texturalaspects.com. Um, I'm on Fletchy Art. I have an Instagram. Uh, handle textualabstract.art um, where I post a lot of videos of, of how a lot of this work has been made and you can email me at jsleader at outlook.com. Um, these are just some of the events um, I uh, have been participating in this year and finally I'm going to leave you with these parting words an artist must never be a prisoner of himself, prisoner of style, prisoner of reputation, prisoner of success. Henri Matisse. Thank you so much. Um, I, it's been a pleasure uh, presenting this to you. Thank you, Jorge. That was really excellent. Um, I particularly like the fact that you incorporate other um, art media, um, uh, poetry and dance and so forth, and also the uh, close-ups were very helpful to understanding uh, your art. If uh, anyone has any questions for Jorge, just uh, type them in the uh, Q&A box at the bottom there and then hit uh, send, and uh, I will be happy to ask uh, for you. Um, some of the comments were very beautiful and very lyrical uh, during your presentation. As um, we wait for questions here, you, you mentioned dental tools. Yes. And uh, very unusual. Um, is that the most unusual tool that you've used? Have you used other um, tools? I have all sorts of unusual tools. Uh, 
but what's my re recent? Okay, so I, I'll go to Home Depot and I'll just go down every aisle, right? Um, and I just, uh, I, I try to look at things from a different perspective and see, you know, what pattern is this going to create? What shape is it going to create? Um, I'm staring across my studio and I'm looking at my, uh, uh, their icing paddles that I saw somewhere. I, I may have been at Bed Bath & Beyond. I thought, oh, these will be really great. I could spread, you know, oil paint. So I'm, I'm, that's, that's one odd, you know. Okay. Bubble wrap is something else I use. Mm -hmm. Right now I am, okay, uh, here's something. You'll probably never look at it the same way. Um, you know the little red bags that your uh, mandarins come in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I take those apart and then I'll brayer them into uh, into my work. It just it's it's all about pattern and about about layering. It's about just creating a history, a conversation within the, within my work, and that's that's what I like about art for me. For me personally, is what is the history that I'm creating within the work? And a lot of a lot of a lot of them just get buried. You know, you, you'll never see them. I know that they're there. Because the final layer will go on, and um, there's only bits of pieces of the conversation that you see. Great. Um, there's a question here. Would you say it is process oriented? Um, so some of it is plan oriented, some of it is process oriented. Uh, a plan oriented piece, of course. Can be it can be easier, but it, it also takes a life of its own. So even though no matter how planned something is, I always end up deviating from it. A process one, of course, from the very beginning, it, it, it's just you're just trying to figure out. But it, it can be so liberating and not knowing what it's going to be. So it's it's almost my mind goes blank. I just okay, you know, I. I this is how how it looks right now, or I may fall in love with something about it. And I think I I talked about that at the very beginning. I may fall in love with a small aspect of it, but I just I'm I'm willing to cover it up to to discover what's going to come later. And it's part of just the process of of liberating yourself and giving up control, basically. Okay, sure. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, your Eden series is reminiscent of. Uh, my favorite muse, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thoughts? Any thoughts on that? Yes, and actually, you know, her name escaped me completely. That's who I was trying to uh, to allude to when I was talking about it. It didn't. It, you know, it's. It, she wasn't in my brain when I was was doing this, but it just happened when I when I finished them that I looked and said, "Wow, it's a little bit." Georgia O'Keeffe. So I think I'm quite okay with that. I think uh, uh, it's definitely an artist that I admire greatly. Um, another one, Helen Frankenthaler, because of just her uh, color field and how she pioneered that aspect of abstract art. So many abstract artists that are women that are so that are, are fantastic are being rediscovered that were overshadowed by their their husbands who were greater than you know who who's who the light was shown more on them than it was on 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 on, on, on the women okay uh, she was married to robert motherwell so um yeah. okay um and other questions you can type them in in the box there and uh hit send uh, you had one or two pieces that are 3D. Do you plan to create more 3D pieces? Yes. Yes, I, those are in the works. Um, I, I'm in the process of adding uh, fabrics and trying to experiment with different things on, in my work, trying to go in a different direction. So um, that is where I'm at right now, actually. Um, something that I also practice a lot is um, concision, which is all that means is the elimination of information, right? Um, sure. uh, I try to look at my work and I say, well, what do I need to paint over? Where, where am I? I'm saying too much. I need to really calm it down. So um, 
within the, the those boundaries, I'm also exploring uh, creating pieces like that. Breaking bonds, which is the uh, it's very tiny actually. That piece is only six inches tall, I think. Wow. So it's big in the, in the in the picture. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay, excellent. And you talked about cold wax and showed us some um, uh, of those works. Yeah. Uh, how, how has your experience with cold wax uh, been? Are you still exploring? Do you? Uh, oh, I still I still explore. I'm I'm <laughs> definitely comfortable with the medium now. Um, it's it's like I, I I said it's it's a beautiful medium. Uh, I think everybody should try it. Um, it's liberating um, because you're kind of you kind of have to let go you have to let go now there are some artists that create some beautiful pieces uh that are cold wax that are uh figurative still lives i mean you can definitely create that the aspect of cold wax that, that appeals to me is that it's a different direction that it's less uh controlled uh and it's what i find uh, appealing and then using all the different tools like you know you, you mentioned the dental tools and um, you can use sticks anything to create pattern and or transfers that then get uh, uh, put onto the work or uh, um, it, it's just it's it's the sky's the limit so uh, another question here do you uh, create specific pieces for specific shows or do you create many pieces and then choose from those what to enter in a show I create many pieces and then choose now I have created maybe a few here and there because the show spoke to me um, but uh, the more you paint, the more inventory you have. So uh, you can go back and look at something and see if it's if it's uh, the right thing for that show. Okay. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Yes, just paint. I uh, I think Andy Warhol. I may not be saying it verbatim, but he said even if they don't like you, just keep painting. It doesn't matter what what anybody says. Art is so subjective. It um, it really is something that's born from from you and and uh, you're your you're your best critic. You're the person who knows when something is is fantastic or when something isn't that great. But just get out there. Um, one thing I would I would I would advise. Uh, aspiring artists enter as many shows as you can even if even if you don't get in uh, it's about building a brand and you can only do that by exposing yourself and yes we give us as artists we give a, a little bit of ourselves every time we get rejected but for me it, it it's I've entered many shows where you know I don't get in I just keep chugging along I just say okay well you know next way just it makes me want to enter more that <laughs> makes sense <laughs> good good that's good advice absolutely yeah don't stop just keep keep moving keep moving um you'll be surprised people walk in and they love your art people will walk in and go what is that <laughs> yeah and you showed us um a piece that you had revisited i believe do you, you do that uh periodically uh, yes uh every once i've done it several times so I'll revisit certain pieces that, um, like I, I believe, uh, Hidden Beauty is one of them, and uh, the other one was Speak Your No, the uh, A New Day is on the Horizon was another one that I showed you. So those are just it's just sometimes they just they just talk to you they just speak to me and say you know I'm not done I'm not finished I have several pieces in my studio that. I keep looking at them and, and I, they, in my head, I think they're done, but they're telling me they're not. So, <laughs> so you're just hanging out in a the corner. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, what are your future plans uh, or goals uh, regarding your artwork? Do you have any? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
future plans is to continue to grow as an artist and to continue to uh, enter shows, regional shows, international shows. I have, uh, every year I make a list that's on, actually on one of my walls behind me. So it's a goal. I have goals that I create as an artist. And I may have 12 things on there. And if I can scratch four things off, I did okay. You know, not all 12 are going to come, are going to happen in that time period. But they're just, they're goals. Their goals are something I think that every artist should do that. Okay. Well, good. Um, any other questions uh, for Jorge? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. All right. Well, uh, thank you uh, very much, then. Uh, let's see. Any, any questions at all? Uh, for Jorge. Whenever we have a surprise. Yes, yes. I was going to say that, but I, I wanted to uh, thank everyone, and uh, we do have a surprise from uh, Jorge. So go ahead. All right. So this painting is a quiver of thought. Uh, I don't know if it's the one that was in the slides. I hope everybody can see it. Um, so. Robert, you'll have to be the. Uh, I'm gonna put it right here. You'll have to be the uh, the one who judges this. Okay. So the first person that tells us what is the one thing that shows up in my work over and over again. I spoke through it almost through every single slide. What is it? I know, I know, but type it in. Yeah, <laughs> um, type it in. Um, Square, uh, says uh, Karen. No. Oh. Okay. And you might hold it a bit higher there. There you go. Got Lower. It. <laughs> it's in, it's in, it's Perfect. In, it's in this painting. Okay. It's something to do with it means nothing, but it is what? It is called what? Writing. Yes. But the name of it is? That might be hard to spell. <laughs> <laughs> did somebody, did somebody, uh... Acidic. I don't think... <laughs> Acidic. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, um, to whomever uh, figured that out, you can send me your address, and this painting will arrive. Great. So wish I had said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about it's about a I think it's about a twenty by eighteen the painting is sixteen by twenty sixteen by fourteen by sixteen. I think that. But uh, it's framed, so it's a little parting gift. Excellent. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Did we get a name? Did we? Uh, yes. Yeah. And I'll share that with you. And uh, she says, uh, thank you with lots of exclamation. <laughs> well, I hope everybody enjoyed it. It was my pleasure. Well, great. Well, we loved having you here. It was really a great session. We thank uh, Sandy and uh, Central Library as well for uh, hosting it and uh, look for this as sandy said on uh, youtube in a, a few weeks or may take a little bit longer um, but again uh, thanks to all and i wanted to thank you this is sandy thank you so much for coming Jorge, i love your work i love all your stories about your work thank you <laughs> thank you so much bye 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 bye